Good morning, fans of Privateer FX. Coming at you Wednesday, hump day here. Getting towards the end of September 25 set. Got this crude oil chart up to start the day. Um, this looks like it's going to fill this gap. The gap closes uh, 55 and a quarter. Choppy stuff um, yesterday with some threatening marks against Iran. Trump made this thing jump a bit, but then it's just settled down with risk off and has come off. Uh, we're not short oil, but we're just pointing out that the hysteria over the drone attacks uh, are, it seems to be over. And now you have two forces driving this to gap close, the technical gap close itself, and also um, risk off. So risk off obviously affects demand in crude. Crude looks to be headed lower. Let's take a look at uh, currencies, which have not really been moving too much. Euro stuck here, uh, 75.25, around 110. Five yards of 110s are, are rolling off tomorrow. Um, everyone now knows this. One thing to keep in mind um, is a good four, over four yards of these expiries are puts. So um, if you argue that uh, Delta is being managed, Monday they were buyers at 70, yesterday they were sellers at 20. There will be buyers again uh, today between 85 and 75. Um, but there comes a point on the top side where because most of these are puts, there'll be less, less delta to trade. So I don't know. Through 25 looks interesting to me. Um, you guys know I've been beating the drum here. I do think uh, we're just about to head into a a dollar sell period uh, dollar Swiss and dollar yen are are negative this week euro has been stubborn has done nothing so euro Swiss and euro yen have taken the brunt of this uh, but I do think eventually when we get big risk off and if we get some more political controversy in the US uh, big flows of money will uh, look for a destination and the destination of last resort or the safest most liquid destination is euro so we're waiting for this to turn we're being very patient uh, depending on what time it is and what's happening we will be looking at this 110 25 area but likely not to trade it we will just wait for this trend line now which is slowly coming down 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 today is at 60 um, tomorrow is going to be at 55 <laughs> Friday it's going to be at 50 um, let's just see let's just wait and see this trend line is going to be our trigger for dollar shorts against the euro let's take a look at ES wild day yesterday bearish engulfing obviously traded up to 30.12 overnight stopping out a lot of the shorts on Monday uh, and then the UN speech was the beginning of it, it was kind of angry at China and uh, ranting about trade that was up at 30.03 uh, and then we moved down to that 95 area and then it became just basically a waterfall down to f down to 60 um, those of you who did break trade through 82 that obviously worked uh, and now it's just a question of keeping a core short. Um, you know, your resistance is going to be between this sort of 79 and 83 today. Don't think we're going to get above that. Core short ES is the way. Cautious, uh, just because you have to always be cautious with S&Ps. You're one comment away. Um, for 20 handles up or down 
as we saw when we were down at 60 and Trump said he's going to release the Ukrainian tapes all the way up to 79, 79, 75, uh, back down to 60. So we're looking for some sideways action here and further uh, downside. This is a combination of uh, impeachment, Richmond, confidence, uh, and a whole series of negativity that's sort of engulfing the S&P 500. We saw a lot of charts this, uh, this morning about corporate CEOs selling the most shares uh, since 2000. Obviously, the WeWork clusterfuck is not helping. Uh, Netflix getting its ass handed to it is also um, one of these sort of fang negative deals. Talking to uh, some of the fund managers we know, they're all talking about 2938 um, as the sort of, this will be the CTA uh, trigger. So 2940 here is this, this uh, sort of 3840 is the support and the breakout below 2938. Um, some of these sort of tactical CTAs will switch from long to short. So this is worth watching this number 2938. And this will confirm um, sort of downside momentum uh, and see if it's intact. Pretty bearish, though, day yesterday. There's no doubt about it. 60 handles door-to-door, -door, top to bottom, bearish engulfed uh, within 1% of the high. We've seen this before. If you look back here in May, we did this uh, 1st of May, bearish engulfed. The next two days were a bit twitchy, uh, so we can we shouldn't not expect some twitchiness. You saw this. So we bearish engulfed. We made a new low here. 2901, but then we traded all the way back to 2948. That was a ball buster. Uh, but then that was the move to 2730 following it. So looking for some sideways consolidation here. We're looking for some moves to make the shorts squirm. But overall, you cannot disregard um, this kind of bar up near the all time highs. Moving on, dollar yen. Really, it was Richmond Fed uh, that turned this thing yesterday. I guess technically this also bearish engulfed. We did make a new high. It's less powerful because it's mid range. Um, we're going to sell this between 40 and 60 today. The, the price was at 60 when Richmond Fed came out. That banged it down to 41. And it was kind of 40, 50 for a while. And then the S&Ps turned and we took us down to uh, 107 the figure this is now a pivot and this kind of coincides with that 2938 deal right I mean this is exactly the same chart except for less vol back through uh, 107 is the same as back through 2940 and spoos pick your poison if you're going to be short dollar yen and short spoos just recognize it's not twice leveraged because of the volatility differences. You know, dollar yen is correlated to S and P's, but the vol is so much lower. But it is kind of the same trade. So if you're managing your risk, uh, keep this in mind. Basically, if you're a pussy um, and you want to trade risk off, and pussy not meaning a negative word, if you're risk averse, use dollar yen as your horse um, and. Uh, if you're a youngster and, and uh, unafraid, play uh, in the other pasture, S&Ps. Uh, much more bang for your buck, but also much wilder, right? I mean, keep in mind, S&Ps traded up to 3012 yesterday. Dollar yen only went up to 107.80. So, um, two similar horses, very different characteristics. Decide for yourself uh, where you are in your trading life, uh, where you are in your trading year, and uh, make your decisions based on that. 
Let's go to Kiwi. Did not cut today. We moved up about 40 points on that. Now we're back. I don't know what to do with this really. Uh, so many people are talking about Aussie Kiwi. I never trade that cross, but it's worth a look. Um, sh uh, short Aussie Kiwi is what a lot of people are saying. I guess we've had this huge move up fairly late. I mean, it's turned up here. I don't even know. I don't know what the hell is going on with Aussie Kiwi. I just wanted to bring it up because a lot of the people I talk to are trading Aussie Kiwi. Um, we are still uh, working on Euro Aussie. So our Aussie side is just Euro Aussie long. We do think this is going to trade up to 166. Same with Sterling Swiss. We're still trading this from the long side patiently. Um, you know, we're in at very, very good levels. Uh, we have a, a tiny bit of carry, but we don't really give a shit about the carry. Uh, but we will look to be reloading this uh, 121. Let's go to our intrepid boons. Short 174.20, sitting here taking some heat up here, 174.76. We believe in this, so we're going to stick with it. We're obviously, st we started this at pretty good levels. We've given back a fair bit of the P&L, but we don't, we do not think this is going to really get through this 63 basis points area here. So we're not reloading yet quite again because we need some kind of turn bar we need some kind of price reason but now we're really looking very closely for a reason to sell more boons um, we're still on this fixed income has turned and contrary to what normally happens obviously stocks get crushed fixed income goes bid we think this time both stocks and fixed income are going to get crushed so short fixed income and short stocks. Brazen call. Um, tread carefully if you're going to follow us on this one. And if you're late to the game and you didn't sell boons on the 176 handle, um, just stay away from this. Anyway, uh, back to today. Uh, let's look at what's happening on the... Um, calendar we got uh, French consumer confidence that nobody cares about jobless uh, in Europe nobody cares building permits nobody cares new home sales mm, there'll be some moderate care there and then we've got crude stocks watch uh, this if there's big supply downside is at risk so really nothing of interest on the release side we are just watching equities, which will get fun, 3.30 Swiss time. And we're watching Euro dollar, uh, which seems seems weird. It's come straight off. But now this 25 level looks decent. And then we're looking at this um, trend line up here. This is the hourly at 66, but the daily comes in at 60. Um, patiently waiting for this to turn we may dip our toes in uh, through 110.25 um, but the bulk of our position will be put on if we get through this trend line one last thing dollar swiss it did turn yesterday eventually 83.90 83 again up to 95 and then finally um, confirm the breakdown to uh, 98.44 this sucker looks negative. This looks bad. And I can tell you locals here are going to squirm. They are all sitting there at one waiting for this. Nobody got paid. The further down it goes, the more pressure it will be to sell. Fourth quarter here. Um, you know, there's a lot of pressure to sell dollar Swiss within the country. If you think about it, I've talked about this a million times, but you know, you've got Nestle, you've got ABB, you've got Roche, you've got Novartis. You have basically six of the top 20 companies in the world all headquartered here in Switzerland, and, and a lot of the currency gets repatriated into Swiss. Um, so this is also going to put pressure on dollar Swiss going into Q4, not to mention all the banks. All right, I've spoken a lot today. I don't really have a lot to say, so sorry about that. Um, 
Good luck uh, with what's going on. Keep making more dough, and I will talk to you tomorrow. Ciao.